It'd be right. so fun. It is time, though, for – it's not really a game, but we're going to hand out some awards, some superlatives for the Browns for this upcoming season, and not your traditional who's the MVP, who's the best player, best defensive player, or some kind of off-the-radar topics and, and some things we necessarily haven't talked about. So I came up with eight different awards that we're going to hand out. All four of your answers are on one graphic. You guys can go around. I'll tell you the topic, and you can explain why you chose each player for each topic. So the first superlative we're giving out today is the guy we aren't talking enough about for the upcoming season. And four different answers came from you four fine gentlemen. Uh, should we start in that order? Should I, should I start first? Sure, yeah, Chubb? you want to start. Um, I love what you said earlier. Nick Chubb's not regular, or, or you get you, you <laughs> yeah, quoted yeah, yeah, Leroy, yeah, Leroy. Leroy. Yeah, he's not regular. We have grown to take Nick Chubb for granted and his greatness. And what I'm hearing from fans and media about the offense doesn't even involve Nick Chubb. Yeah. It involves this new look offense and this Elijah Moore cat who <laughs> is supposed to be great. I mean... I, this is a prove-it league. This is a grown man league. I got to see it before I'm buying it, and I haven't seen it. I know there's a lot of potential there. Potential, as Warren Sapp used to say, is another word for failure because potential at some point has to come performance. I haven't seen that from him yet, but I'm told he's going to change my world. <laughs> That's a lot of big words. But it's funny to me. We have one proven commodity on the <coughs> offense, not named Joel Batonio. And his name is Nick Chubb. But he's forgotten. He's, he's just He just doesn't get the respect he deserves nationally. I think locally he's overlooked. He's admired and appreciated and loved. But when you hear people talk about what we have to do to win, it all revolves around Deshaun Watson. All as, of it. Yeah, as good as Chubb is, you could always talk about him more. Uh, there's never enough. Stuff. But Doesn't I dis- seem to be. But I disagree forgotten? with you that he's forgotten. I, we well, talked about well, him a lot we've heard here. This. Uh, they're they're going to be more pass run heavy this year than they were last year. Yeah. I, Why I, are you running away from your strength? I, uh, well, because you have a better passing game. So you we know. do. Well, you should theoretically. Have I haven't game. seen it yet. That's theoretically. what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, yeah, right, I've been you win by by passing in the NFL. That's, absolutely, that's, you know. but so I, I but I I think nationally Nick Chubb gets a ton of respect. I think mo- a lot of people consider him. The I best just think he's under talked about. I do. Uh, yeah, I you got the, you. The, the, you guy, the guy I think he's under talking about is Jedrick Wills. I just think for a he's, different reason. He's just <laughs> he's below average to average. Like, may, I mean, for a top ten pick, we'll see. Um, you know what they do, but I actually think he's he's the key to whether or not the Browns low key will be good. You're going against guys that have speed rushers that do their thing. I think Jed Wills needs and, and if he just if he just had his effort, I don't mind if you get beat, but just have the effort every single play through the whistle. That's th- those are the plays that make him look worse than w- what actually he really is. Here's the thing, I, I, you know, I like Dewan Jones. They've been working him in a lot of different places. Um, they got some guys to back them up, but I think this guy is really a, a key to whether or not the passing game looks right and if they're going to be able to run the ball consistently like they did in 2020 uh, with Chubb. So I think we should be talking about that a little bit more. This is really funny, and you'll see why when we get to the next when we get to the next one. I picked Jerome Ford as the guy we're not talking much about, and it's kind of an off-the-radar pick. But I think Jerome Ford's going to be really good. And I know going back to Jay's point, we haven't seen it. We haven't seen out of Deshaun. We haven't seen out of Jerome Ford. You know, Bubba Ventrone was talking yesterday about he likes to show on Fridays highlight reels from guys' high school seasons. And he said he's showing Jerome today. And he said it's the best high school film he's ever seen. That's crazy. And, and I understand, like, that's high school. It's a few years ago. I just think that there's a role for Jerome Ford in this offense. I know he missed some time in the preseason. Uh, and we've been talking at length. Do they need to bring in somebody else? You know, do they need more help? Is it, can you really count on this guy? Between the return game on kick returns, and, and we've talked before on the show about there are a lot of touches in this offense for guys not named Nick Chubb in the backfield. And I think Jerome Ford's going to get those. And we really haven't spent a lot of time talking about him this preseason. I think he's going to hold a much bigger role in this offense. And I know it gets he's funny. He's essentially the Kareem Hunt now. Yeah, he is. He's it is been funny. hurt, though. That's part of the reason we haven't talked about him. Right, much. right. Yeah. But, you know, we could talk about – David Njoku is going to be a big, big, big part of this offense. Elijah Moore is going to be a big part of this. There's only so many guys that can be a big part of this offense. Yeah. And I know I'm picking a backup running back. So what are we really talking about here? But we've 
studied and analyzed and overanalyzed so many guys on this. I just think he's one of the guys that's flown under the radar that might surprise you and have a bigger role than you so think. So Jason thinks they are going to run the football more this year. Mm. I also said return <laughs> game. I think I think he's a better returner. Yeah, he, I think he's I a pretty like, good kicker. I liked him in the too. return game last yeah. year. I really so did. So I think he's yeah. going to have a role on this team. And Bo, right. you had Delpit real quick. Wrap this up. Yeah, I went with Delpit because I, I thought about who's the best player on the Browns that we never talk about. And everybody better than Delpit. And there's a decent amount of guys better than him. We talk about a lot. We right. never talk about Delpit. There's been a lot of talk about Thornhill. Yeah. I thought the second half of, remember, Delpit was a high draft pick. And he had injuries and ineffectiveness. Second half of last year, he put it all together. And I'm expecting him to have a big season. And especially if Thornhill is hurt, can't play, like he's going to be even more important. So I, he has, I feel like we never talk about him at all. And I think he's a pretty good player. And I think he's a guy we all expected to be good. It finally happened last year, second half. I'm expecting a I think full the good injuries have kind of kept him yes. out of our conversations no doubt. too. Yes, but so he's healthy. We right need now. him to stay healthy. 100 percent healthy. Like, right. I, he was awful early in the year. That's why I don't. Right. Believe, I don't believe in him yet because I need to see it for a whole year. Yeah. He was, maybe it was the wrong scheme. Whatever. He was terrible. Yeah, I think there were a lot season. of guys that looked awful last year, and I think it had a lot to do with the guy that was Could've. drawing up the X's and O's. Could have. All right, Mike. Next. All right, next one. I'm going to let Jason start because he's the only person who went off the beaten path here. The next superlatives. The guy we're talking too much about, three guys picked Elijah Moore, and Jason, you went with <laughs> Jed Wills. Jed Wills. Jed Wills. So, Gene didn't think we're talking the about flip, him enough. The, the, I think we're talking about him too much in a negative light, and now I'm going to, like, die on the Jed Wills hill, which I never That's intended. A bad hill to die I on. never intended to climb this hill, but I think – I think he. I think we make too big of a deal about him, and I don't think he's as bad as what he gets talked about. Now, having said that, is it because of where he was drafted? Probably. Yeah. And that's not his fault. And who fault. he followed. And who he followed. And who he followed. Well, I still like, don't think he's very good, but those things but, factor and, in. And I have to say, my favorite part of practice is watching Jed Will stretch. Like it's pitiful. And Zach Jackson's play-by-play of watching Jed Will stretch is worth the price of admission. It's hilarious. He could take getting his wrist taped. Make that 12 minutes so he doesn't have to stretch. Like, wow. he runs out on the field and sits down on the bench. Like, there are things that he does that are infuriating. And I get why sometimes he gets some of the criticism that he does. I just don't think he's as bad as we've made him out to be. I think he's average. I think he's an average left tackle. You can win with an average left tackle. Do you want elite? Of course you want elite. The Browns clearly agree with that. Yeah, you can't yeah, have I, a turnstile there. I, I agree with G. I think you're wrong. I think he's below average. I don't, I don't think, think he's he horrible, but I think he's below average. The PFF grades every year, he, he's, been, he's been one year he's been average. The other three, he's been below average. I think. He, I think and what else do. can you just use? When it comes to an offensive lineman, I think the he's not player. because he's not getting the quarterback killed. That's what I look at. Are you getting the guy killed? He's not. I, I think he's. I don't think he's elite by any means, but I think he's. I think he's serviceable he's just mid. and average. But he's and, mid. And when you're when you're drafted in the first round and you come with the hype that he had at and you follow Joe Thomas at a premium yes. mid position, just never more. shines enough. You expect, but I'll tell you what. When if he goes down. What are you going to do? Well, yeah. I know what well, I'm going to do. You're, you're probably going to move Big Fella. Yeah, Big Fella is going to get moved well, to left tackle. But, yeah, I, at, but again, by, they're by the way, Steve Becker is right. We all failed he this is. assignment. He is. DTR should have been the choice. I had Actually, I had Dewan Jones at first as Wait. the guy being talked about too right. much. Sort of in that well, category. Dorian Thompson Robinson. As guys, we, of course you talk about the back of quarterback in the preseason. And that's why I didn't yeah. go there. He got talked about but it's way the pre- too much. But it's the, it's the it's preseason. It's why we talked about Imani freaking Bates for three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, it's totally different. Yeah. Here's the thing with, with the DTR talk. And, and I know what that, else are we judging it on? But, Bull, when you went into this year's camp, this year's camp was much different for the Browns than any yeah. other year that I can remember. It's because... You were really talking about five or six roster spots. You were talking about any starting jobs. That hasn't happened for right. Cleveland in a long time. Why would, so now what are you going to focus on in training camp? The but second that's not most a qualification. Important the, que- yeah. the question was who got the most talked about. Yeah, but yeah, I, I took look, it as, I get that, but in terms of guys who are actually going to play and contribute on the yeah, field. Yeah, all right. Yeah, Fair I enough. mean, but it's preseason, and it's there's a different yardstick in right. the preseason. Right. A lot of years we're measuring starting positions. Yeah, yeah. Many other years we're we're measuring the guys that are make the team. Yeah. This year the big talk was who the hell's going to be our backup quarterback? And he played well. He got a lot of talk. We're not going to mention his name if and you, when right. until Deshaun gets hurt. Right. By he the way, is Tyvis, persona non grata now. Tyvis right as usual saying I picked the right player with Delpit. 
He says I'm winning the show so far. No, he, he did not say that. He Wait, said it. He did not say that. <laughs> Wait, no, he did. He did say that. Yeah, he, he said Kemp was our pick. You guys all it. picked Elijah Moore as the guy, so we'll we'll move on. Yeah, to I the mean, next so so, but we're obviously right. I mean, yeah, the, the, the three of us are obviously right with Elijah Moore. They, yeah, he has gotten a lot of hype. Of the oh, guys that got a lot of hype. Of the For guys that are going too? to here, you Ben Mid. Of the These guys who are going to contribute, he's been the most overtalked player. Without it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the next superlative yeah. had four different answers, so we're going to move on here. This yeah. is the player who scares you the most for the upcoming season. And, Bull, I'll let you start. We'll go around the horn. Four different answers. Bull, you went with the unnamed kicker, a.k.a. Dustin Hopkins. I mean, how could it not be the kicker? No. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, to me, this was a no-brainer. You got, like, on offense – who am I most worried about? Okay, I'm a little worried about Jedrick Wills. Can Njoku play even better? Obviously Watson, but like I'm assuming he's going to at least be good, most likely, because I've seen him be good most of his career. Uh, on defense, yeah, there's some questions at linebacker, but if a, one of the linebackers is not great, all right, they'll survive. A bad kicker can, could, could cost him the season, I think, more than anything else outside of Watson just not being good. Right. So... And, and I have no faith in this kicker. He can't make long kicks. Uh, they, they put all their eggs in the basket on Cade York. Now he's a practice squad in Tennessee. So they have not solved a key problem. And you look at this division, Justin Tucker's the best kicker in football. Evan McPherson and, and uh, Boswell are both top five kickers in the league. That's a major advantage that the other teams have over the Browns. And it's division. not an easy division to kick in. There right. are no domes. Right. It's, they're, for the most part, cold-weather cities. Yeah. So from the last eight games of the season, yeah. can very well be played on an ice sheet. That's right. I agree with what you said, but I can't take the kicker because they could just cut a Monday. If he has a bad game Sunday, they're going to cut a Monday and move on to That's the That's why guy. I just put kicker, not necessarily yeah. the okay. Hopkins. Who they have I right picked now. Denzel Ward because of the injury concerns, the contract, and the head injuries. Like, it kind of scares the hell out of me. With the money that they're paying this guy, he misses three to four games every year. Mark it down. He's going to miss three to four games. And now with this fourth concussion, we've talked about it before, I have very serious concerns about his longevity, both in for long-term health for his own good, after football, for life after football. So I'm very concerned about Denzel Ward. I think he's going to play Sunday. I think you know we've moved past this one, but we're at four. I don't want that meter to keep running. So in terms of his ability on the field, no, I have no fear about who he is, but – for cap reasons and for everything else, yeah, I'm concerned about Denzel Ward. Man, easy for me, Taki Taki. You look at it with uh, his injury uh, last year. I've torn the ACL later in the year um, playing football. Like, you know, when it gets to be October, November. I tore mine a little later, December 13th. And, yeah, you're good. You tear that first ACL. You always worry about it, Jay, you know. You worry about the other ACL. Or you, yeah, worry, you worry about, about the same ACL. You worry about the same one. And when you talk about being a linebacker getting downhill, are you going to trust your leg when you explode left to right? Taki Taki is also a good guy on special teams. I thought he was a guy that <clears throat> plays the middle linebacker position very well in your nickel packages. So, you know, they're going to bring him along a little slower. But, uh, you know, just for me knowing his injury history, him and, and Anthony Walker being guys that have not played in contact, have not really done anything because since they've been injured, obviously they get out there. I know they know the playbook, but I'm not sure. I, I'm comfortable with them moving around with these knee injuries that quick. All good points. Uh, I mentioned Taki Taki for one of our later sp superlatives, but you're all obviously wrong, and <laughs> here's why. I'm going to – all 22, let's call 24 – put yeah. the punter and kicker in there, are holding a basket, and you have 100 eggs, and you can hand out the eggs as to how you think, what their importance is for the season. So, Taki Taki, you're going to get four eggs. I'm going to need you to be available and healthy. And kicker, whoever you are, whatever number you wear, you're going to get eight because you got to make kicks. You miss kicks, you're going to lose games. And Denzel Ward, absolutely. Pivotal player on the defense. You're going to get some eggs too. But... The guy that's getting the most eggs in his basket is easily the quarterback, Deshaun Watson. This season hinges on number four. And you made a point. You said, you know, I mean, he's, we've seen him be good before. And I, everybody wants to pretend like the last six games last year never happened. I don't think that's pretending it didn't happen. No, but what you said was, yeah. we know that he's been good before. Yeah. But... It, it, we talked about how this is a week-to-week -week league. We're going back three years to his. Yeah, I hear you. So it, it, I fair. can't go back three years. I'm going to say the same thing I said about Elijah Moore. 
I hear you're really good. I hear you're tearing up practice. But we talk about practice, to quote Allen Iverson. I need to see it. And I hope to God I see it because all of my eggs are in number four's basket. If those eggs crack, our season is over. If Denzel Ward gets hurt, next man up. It's a, it's a, it's a loss, but next man up. If the kicker misses, you're right. We cut him, we get a new one. It's a loss, but we're okay. Taki Taki is the position that the Browns have deemed the least important on the roster. Somebody will take his place. Maybe it will be Bull. But <laughs> at quarterback, yeah. that's what scares me the most. Yeah. And I think I've convinced you guys, and now you can admit that uh, I was right. I mean, fair. we can say Deshaun Watson for everyone, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's Mike, the extra factor. I, I, Mike, he's the, he's someone the voted Deshaun Watson for six of the eight answers. Yeah. So, yes, he does yeah. fit. Did someone, really? <laughs> yeah. Six of the eight Deshaun Watson. Right. It wasn't me. Mike, Mikey wants to move on. And I, no, no, no. Not, not, not like no, one person, least, but I mean. At least one of us. Oh, at least one of us. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw yeah, Watson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, that's what, that's what it is. Jay, 20 seconds or less, if Deshaun was suspended for all of last year. Yeah. And Sunday would be your first look. I'd at feel him. better about it. Hey, yep. I would feel yep. better about it. Yep. 100%. 100%. Because I can't wash the taste out of my yeah, mouth yeah. of the New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are preseason of, games. You know, so I just, you know, and look, I'm still going to give them some slack. It was a different offense because they had built this thing to run around Jacoby Brissett's motor. Hey, so it was different. But I still saw what I saw, right. and I can't bulky race that's, it from my that's mind. That's the key question. How much, that's the talking point, how much slack are you giving him oh, so you need to see You it? could say you're going to give him slack. If he plays poorly against the Bengals, it's going to be packed. Yeah. yeah. And that, then those last six games become much more right. meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. now, I'm willing to write those off as yeah. a bad, just a bad experience. Right. right, and that's what we will do if he plays well If this he year. plays well, it's that's, all is forgotten. Yeah. And, and 2020, Deshaun Watson Mike, is Mike, I back. told him 20 seconds. I'm sorry. I, know. I told I, him 20 yeah. seconds. Go ahead. Next up, Ford. Don't we tell have me three 20. of the same answers for the next one. So, G, you're the only one who's going to speak on this superlative. The most fun guy on the Browns to root for. You three, outside of G, all said Nick Chubb. Wow. But, G, you said Marquise Goodwin. Oh, uh, yeah. explain that real e- quick? Easy, bro. He, he could have been done. He could have been out of here. We was we was putting him him on bubble wrap. Career was over. We saw what happened to, to uh, you know, guys like uh, Chris Bosh. That's a serious injury. And I think everybody was giving him the thoughts and prayers. You out of here. You know, yeah, yeah, it's true. like no lie, no lie. You know what I'm saying? You go see your, your, you know, you see your dude. You be like, man, G. Bush looking sick. You know what I'm saying? We giving him thoughts and prayers. He might be about here. You give him that pat on the shoulder. You get that two pat. You gone. Yeah. So I thought that was, but he comes back. He practicing. He got a new lease on life. He changed his number. The dude, you root for him just by hearing his story about his sister. And he's a great dude. And he's a great dude. Yep. Came on the show. I'm super rooting for him. Super yeah. rooting for him. You know him what? I'm gonna change my pick. You, you, you convinced me. Yeah. Because I love Nick Chubb, but you're right. Marquise Goodwin. He's got the best story. He, he, right his, and he's just such a good human being, yeah. like Nick Chubb. And yeah. he's a fan of UCSS, which makes us like right. him even more. Okay, next category, next superlative. Which player on the Browns is most likely to make you change your opinion of him this year? Either good to bad or bad to good. Three different answers. Two of you guys doubled up. Steve, you could take it. And G, you said J O K. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wait, listen, shout out to DQ. Listen, if De- I'm, I'll give you credit. If DeQuell Jackson, it, it, you don't say your spirit is alive and well. I can see you be turning around like Dr. Claude, like yesterday, with the beard on and getting your bottle. But if you got them together in, in, in spring training or, or OTAs, I'll give it to you. I've liked what I've seen from JLK so far. Much more decisive, much more downhill. He's hitting the gaps. He's shooting. Boom. If they can do that, JLK can go from a guy we laughed about last year yeah. to oh my goodness, this I is the guy they want. I haven't seen anything from JLK because the preseason doesn't count. I'm going with David. <laughs> I'm going with the date with David Njoku. Now, I think Jason's <laughs> probably right that, the, and I've thought this way. Njoku probably is what he is. He's a mid tight end, and he's just. But he's above mid. I'm going to all right, slightly above mid. Yeah. Top I'm twelve. Gonna, I'm going to give him one more chance because this is the first time in his career, I believe, that he's going to play with a, a quarterback that I think is going to be really 1,100 good. yards you got him for? No, I do not have him for 1,100 <laughs> yards. But I think he could get 800. Okay. I think he, I think it's possible to get eight touchdowns, nine touchdowns. That would be a monster year. If he had 837 yards and nine touchdowns. I compared all, to what compared to what we've seen, it's yeah. not Travis Kelsey, but he's no, never going to be Travis. But we'd Kelsey. all sign for that. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, we so I, I think he could do that. Right. And you, obviously, you guys good. got yeah, Watson. Yeah, speaks for about itself. That. Deshaun Watson. Yeah. you know, 
I, my pendulum could swing very, very far on, on Deshaun Watson. You going to get a jersey? And we're going to talk pendulum. Sure, hell yeah. <laughs> Some of these if he wins, kind of I don't wear jerseys. Kind of yeah, yeah grown men don't wear jerseys. No, other, not about other men. men. We have Mary Kay saying. waiting in the wings, so we're going to fly what through these saying? last three real okay. quick. Yep, very, very quickly so we get to Mary Kay. The guy most <laughs> likely to be traded midseason, G and Bull both said DPJ. Jay, you said Njoku. Yeah. Um, I, I – you know, we've talked about him, what expectations are for him. We know that the importance of the tight end position is big. Yeah, uh, he looks like Tarzan. I'm not going to say he plays like Jane. He looks like Tarzan, but he's never played like Tarzan. Uh, and I think that even if the Browns come to the conclusion that he's never going to be Tarzan, there's always going to be somebody that looks at this guy physically and watches him walk into a room, whether it's in street clothes, no shirt, or a full uniform, and they're going to say, Wow. This Jay, guy could be the greatest tight end ever. If Jay is right about this, it's a disaster. It means the Browns are having a terrible season and, it's, and everything's gone off the wheels. If we're right about this. Or the, another tight end steps up. Well, but who's, who the hell's going to step They don't have enough, you know. Oh, they have Harrison Bryant. So mine yeah, wants to trade him on the family. That's who Jason I, said. That's who I say. <laughs> I think that they have enough depth at tight end that if you can. Well, what are you going to get it for Harrison Bryant? Well, if he can't sweat. get on the field, if he can't get on the field because the guy's in front yeah, of him. Nobody's going to trade anything for him. But it's a position of need. Like, it's hard I to find good know. tight ends. And like, you're going to get more for Harrison Bryant. You're a DBJ. No, no, you yeah, get you something. I'm surprised never thought anything. What are you going to get for DPJ? A fifth? Right, well, you, maybe. Okay. And DPJ is a, for... a guy who could be traded even if they're good because maybe Cedric Tillman starts making inroads. They're like, he's going to be gone. A team's looking for a receiver. Maybe we could trade him for a, a fringe linebacker. You need more receivers on the field of Utah. All right, what else? What's next? We're going to skip the pendulum guy because we've already talked about all yeah, four guys on question. there. And we're going to go to my favorite one. This was a G. Bush submission. Guys you simp for this year. The guy who you... <laughs> Regardless of how they perform on the field, <laughs> just, just root to, for. I hate that. You have term. a heart soft, uh, <laughs> soft spot in your heart for. Uh, Jay, you went with Denzel. Everyone, you got 10 seconds each. Tell us why, and then we'll bring in Mary Kay. Yeah, I, I, I love Denzel. I need him to be the Denzel that we saw a couple of years ago, not the one we saw last year. I don't know what was going on with him last year. I think it. May, I don't know if it was personal off the field. He just was did not play like Denzel Ward. Um, I'm, I'm rooting hard for him to return to the – Number twenty-one that got that one hundred million dollar contract. Man, I've been looking for I've been looking for a soulmate to go besides Miles Garrett for years, and I think I finally found it. Zadarius <laughs> Smith, man, you're fun. You got the dreads. You looked the part. I like with the energy level, and I need thirteen sacks. I, I'm on record saying thirteen, and that's like a high that's a high figure. But you know, I'm simping for him because I love the Browns defensive line. You know, I'm a, I'm a defensive lineman. Jason, so. first of all, I don't sit for no one. <laughs> Nobody. Good point. And this he don't a wear jerseys. Question. No I don't jerseys simp for and simping. no one. So I should have just left this one blank. But I do like Wyatt Teller a lot. <laughs> also, you're shipping for Wyatt Teller. Well, I had to pick somebody. I had to pick somebody. Jason Lloyd of the Athletics says he's Terrible shipping. No, question. no, no. No, I like, I like Wyatt. I think he was really hurt last year. I think he was hurt more than people realized. He was playing through a lot of stuff. Didn't have a great year. He's healthy now. I think he's going to have a big year. You guys all embarrass yourselves with this answer. The best player to play for the Browns since 99, not named Joe Thomas, yeah. is Nicholas Jamal well, Chubb. Well, we could pick right. and Nick that's Chubb the and the Deshaun Watson for yeah, every no, answer. Nick like Chubb I'm trying to be creative is, and mix it up here. Is the best running back the Browns have had since since Jim Brown. He's going if, – if he stays healthy and does it for a few more years, he's, in the, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He does everything right. He's always about the team. He never causes controversy. He never gets in trouble. He never parties. He never does anything. He stays at his house and plays football, and that's all he does. He is the freaking man. And you forgot about Tommy Vardell. Touchdown. Or it's close between those two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Touchdown, Tommy. <laughs> well, that was fun, guys. We appreciate it. We'll go back and revisit this at the end of the season. Before we bring in Mary Kay, 